Good morning everybody. Uh, welcome to my channel, Kiss Keto by Keto Kath. I'm Kath and this channel is all about my weight loss journey to lose 56 pounds following a ketogenic lifestyle. Um, I do weekly videos every Friday, so if you want to follow my weight loss, get some hints and tips for yourself, please hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell so you get notifications every time I do a video, give me a thumbs up and feel free to leave me a comment. Um, so subscribe below please. Right, okay. Today's Friday the 19th of March. Firstly, it's my little brother. 50th birthday today so happy birthday Andrew if you watch this video uh, this video is called correct electrolyte imbalance and caffeine and ketones I've had a fantastic week this week I've had a real scientific week I've been following the science all week and it has absolutely fascinated me last week I reckon I was on a stall and I committed to doing three things one was eating real food so nothing packaged or pre-packaged just basic meats and veg which I've done um, the second was cutting out dietary fats. So uh, I do. I was having a lot of cream and a lot of cheese actually. I've had a tiny bit of cheese, not much, but I've completely cut out the cream. And then the third one was doing two meals a day because I seem to have navigated to one meal a day. Let me just get a cup of coffee. Navigated to one meal a day, just bear with me. Now, that didn't happen. I didn't end up having the two meals a day every day. I think I did it two days, and I'll tell you why. There's a really big reason for that. After the video last week, on Friday, I watched um, a video from Keto in the Chaos, and it was uh, she's been going years. She's lost like 200 pounds nearly, I think, or over 200 pounds on Keto. And she did a frequently asked question, because she does do um, coaching, um, you know, for people that want to learn about Keto. So she did a frequently asked question video and one of the things that jumped out to me was the electrolytes and how much to take. i have been banging on all the time about your salt, you must have your salt, you must have your salt. And one of the um, things that I've switched to doing is using chronometer to track all my food rather than um, carb manager. A chronometer also tracks your salt, your potassium, all your little micronutrients and I've realised since I've gone to chronometer over the last week previous that I'm not having enough salt and potassium. And I thought I was, I've been salting everything, taking a little bit of salt in my coffee, and I thought I was doing fine. I occasionally get leg cramps, and occasionally, you know, I get a lot of um, cravings as well. And having the correct amount of salt addresses both those things. So I realized after watching this frequently asked question, but I wasn't having enough salt, I'm just, I think I'm doing okay, but I'm actually not scientifically tracking the salt and the potassium. So I decided to bite the bullet and follow um, her way of doing things, which is to make sole water, which is basically like a container like this, dump a pot of salt in it. I put a pot of pink Himalayan salt in, fill it up with water, give it a shake, and then leave it 24 hours. When it settles, the top half will be clear. And the science behind that is it's absorbed as much salt as it can possibly absorb. It can't absorb anymore. And in every tablespoon of that water from the top, and you've got to keep it still to sort of decant it, is 1400 milligrams of salt. And you need four a day, minimum. And I was not having anywhere near 1400 milligrams of salt. And if your salt goes low, it also tanks your potassium and that you get leg cramps from that. And I'd been having that. Um, so I decided I was going to make the sole water. And what I've done is I put four tablespoons in this every day. I then put two grams of low salt, which is potassium. Low salt is potassium. So I put two grams of that in. And then I fill it up with water and put some flavor drops in. So I put lemon drops in. Sometimes I put a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar just for the health benefits of apple cider vinegar. But I fill it up with water and put lemon flavor drops in and I can't taste anything. And I sip on that throughout the day. And I think the important thing is you mustn't have these four tablespoons at once. It's got to be throughout the day. If you drank four tablespoons of that solar water all at once, you'd just be straight on the toilet with the runs because that's what it does to the salt attracts the water to the bowel so anybody that's got constipation issues sole water is a great fix for that and it's really helped me i've been really regular this week it's been fantastic it's been the easiest i think i've, I've found it since i started keto nine months ago it's dealt with the cravings a little drink of that and the cravings seem to go away i feel 
100% better than I've ever felt on keto in the past. And I've always said, when you're in ketosis, you feel fantastic, you feel energetic, you feel positive mindset, you want to, what shall I do next? What shall I do now? You know, you keep going, you've got so much more energy. But I found with having that sole water and sipping on it all day, my energy has been doubled and I haven't had the cravings and that's been the hardest thing. And that's where I failed. The cravings have overtook my willpower and I've given in and then I'm down on myself. But that has really helped me deal with the cravings this week. But the other thing that Tammy says on Keto in the Chaos is that if you've been doing this since day one, taking your solo water, you'll have no imbalance in your salt or anything like an electrolytes, you'll be fine. You know, you'll continue with the weight loss. If you're already on your keto journey and all of a sudden you're going to increase your salt intake, you're going to gain water because salt holds water in the body and it can be between five and ten pounds the first week you do it. So I was mortified at the thought of me gaining between five and ten pounds of water weight. As you just say, the next week it will, it will sort itself out, but that initial increase in salt will cause you to have water weight gain. So I decided to do some fasting because I thought I need to mitigate the, te the balance off the, the salt intake. I don't want to have a massive weight gain like that. I don't know what that would do to my head. So I decided to do some fasting this week to try and mitigate the impact of me increasing my salt. Saturday, I started on the salt. Sunday, I've took it every day. I've literally drank all this with salt with potassium and with um, apple cider vinegar in. I've drank one of these every single day and just sipped on it throughout the day. Sunday was Mother's Day and I completely forgot about that when I did my video last week. So I decided I chose to have a day off, which would take me out of ketosis. Uh, but I was in control. I didn't go mad. I, I, I had things that I wouldn't have on keto. Like I made a Mother's Day lunch for my own mother. I made one for myself and just like a little afternoon tea with sandwiches, um, you know, and, and a bread, you know, things like that. That was It was really nice. I enjoyed it, but I chose to do it and I don't feel guilty. And I got I'm in control of it. I was literally Mother's Day finished. That's it now. Back onto the diet. So that was a choice I made, but I was it was I was very much in control. When I weighed myself Monday morning, if you think I was 11 stone 9.2, I think when I weighed myself Monday morning, having had this sole water for two days, I was 12 stone two. I'd gained seven pounds, which you think is impossible. But that's what water can do to your body. And that's why people advise don't get weighed every single day because your fluctuations in water weight from one day to the next, even if you're 100% on plan, your weight can go up because of water. Just remember, I'm thirsty today. Can't live without my coffee. Um, so I'd gained seven pounds. So Monday I fasted. I actually fasted from Tuesday from when I finished my Mother's Day treat. I fasted from Sunday evening for 48 hours and when it got to 7 p.m which i think sunday was about the last time i ate on sunday was 7 p.m so on tuesday at 7 p.m when i hit my 48 hours and i tracked it on there's a fasting app called zero you can track when you completed 48 hours I, I then ate a platter of cold meats and cheeses and um pepperoni and, ha and ham and things like that i had a platter of uh, meats tuesday evening so i kept my carbs very very low then on Wednesday, I ate as normal. I ate the two meals that I said I would eat. So I think lunch again, I had another, I love cold meats and um, a couple of olives and things like that. A platter of uh, meats. And then Wednesday evening, I had steak, steak and mushrooms for tea. But what I've done is I've kept my carbs very, very low. And the reason for that, I'll go into my measurements in a bit, my ketone levels. I've been tracking the effect of the water. I've been tracking three things, actually. I've been tracking my blood sugars, Again, because Sunday I had the day off and I wanted to know because even though you're diabetic and keto can fix diabetes, you can reverse it completely, get off all medications. What you can't do is go back to eating the way you did. So the minute you introduce carbs, those blood sugars go back up. Your body's not fixed. It can't be fixed. You've just got to keep your carbs very, very low for the rest of your life. So I wanted to track my blood glucose because I'd had this treat day. I've been tracking my ketones to see when I was back in ketosis and how the salt and everything else will affect my ketones. And I've also been tracking my blood pressure because um, adding salt to your body could raise your blood pressure. So I've been tracking that. That's been fine, actually. It's been absolutely perfect all week. So yesterday I fasted 
And then Friday today, this morning, about 10 a.m., I brought my fast with uh, some scrambled eggs, actually scrambled eggs in butter. So I've had a couple of days where I've eaten twice a day, but I've had quite a few days where I've been fasting to try and mitigate the water, get, the water gain from taking this sole water. And it has worked. I'm a couple of pound up on the scales. I'll put my weigh in later on. So I want to talk about the figures, actually, the science and the stats. So I have been following the science this week and it's absolutely fascinated me and a lot of people say no don't measure if your carbs are low you'll be in ketosis not necessarily the fact actually it depends a lot on what you eat if you're eating too much if your calories are over what you're drinking it all affects those ketone levels so it's been really really interesting I want to know I'm in ketosis when I know I'm in ketosis I know I'm burning fat so I know as long as I keep my calories in a deficit, I don't eat too much fat, my body has to burn its own fat. So that's the goal, I want to be in ketosis. So I've been tracking blood sugars and ketones all week. So as I say, I fasted for 24 hours from Sunday evening, actually 40 hours, but after 24 hours I'd expect to be in ketosis, your body starts producing ketones. So I tested my ketone levels. Uh, was it, let me see, I've just written it down. Tuesday morning, so Tuesday morning I done 36 hours fasting Tuesday morning. My ketone levels were not 0.1. So not really producing any ketones at all. You have to be not 0.5 or above to be in ketosis. My ketone levels were not 0.1. But what's going on? I've been fasting for 36 hours. I would expect to have been in ketosis. But when I tested my blood sugars, my blood sugars were 8.8, .8, which is high. It, it, it's not as high as it had been. They're very rarely were mine under double figures before keto. But between four and seven is optimum. So 8.8 .8 is high. Now I'll put that down to the Sunday, Mother's Day, me eating white bread. I mean, I had thick, lovely crusty white bread. Really enjoyed it. Uh, and other things that were higher in sugars. So my blood sugars, I thought, were probably from Sunday. So I just knew, because my blood sugars were high, my keto levels were going to be low. So I tested them again Tuesday afternoon as I was more going deeply into my fast. And on Tuesday afternoon at 2 p.m., my ketone levels were 0.4 and my blood sugars had come down to 6.4. Now that's okay, it's between that four and seven range. So that meant things were moving in the right direction. So uh, one for following the science, I really wanted the data. At 6 p.m. I tested again. My ketones were still 0.4, so they hadn't changed, but my blood sugars had come down to 5.4. So I knew as long as I kept my carbs low, and the only reason and the only way you can get into ketosis is by the absence of carbs. Not by the protein or by the fat that you eat, but by the absence of carbs. So I knew on Tuesday, and that is why I had a platter of meats, because I didn't want the carbs. I wanted my carbs to stay low so I could actually start transitioning into ketosis. But I was surprised I wasn't in ketosis after a 48 hour fast I've got to be honest with you so Wednesday a.m. I checked them again my blood sugars this time after being 5.4 Tuesday evening were 8.8 .8. I thought what on earth's going on why have they gone up I've had absolutely no carbs and nothing to affect my blood sugars and then my ketones were still 0.4 which I don't expect them to be so they hadn't dropped with the blood sugars going up but they were still 0.4 and I know that I suffer from what's called the dawn effect but I didn't realize what a big impact that does have on my body the dawn effect is as your body gets these signals to start waking up it dumps sugars into your bloodstream and that's why my blood readings are high and it's called the dawn effect and after a couple of hours it it, it, it lowers and it, it corrects itself but a lot of people suffer with the dawn effect so if you're testing your blood sugars first thing in the morning you may be better testing them later in the day and seeing what the difference is because this was like a wow moment for me 8.8 .8 and I've had absolutely no carbs in three days that's high so that dawn effect has a massive impact on my body so I then tested them again thinking about mid-morning late morning the blood sugars would have come down and my ketones would have gone up I was really surprised at 11 a.m straight after I had a cup of coffee my ketones were 0.1 and they were 0.4 in the morning but how could they drop when I've eaten nothing I'm not eating anything on Wednesday by this time. Uh, I'd eaten Tuesday evening, but at this point in the day, I hadn't eaten anything at 11 a.m. And all I'd had is coffee and my ketones were 0.1. So the only conclusion I could come to was that coffee is affecting my ketone levels. So I tested again at half one in the afternoon and we're back to 0.4. So then I was on a mission to find out why does coffee 
dump ketones. Why am I ketones lowering? Because I live on coffee. I've been co drinking coffee for the whole nine months. This has been what I call my bridge. It's getting me through the day. I really enjoy a cup of coffee. So I found um, a video by Thomas Deloyer, which is, if you're looking at keto, you'll, he'll come up. He's probably the top subscribed um, YouTube channel for information on ketosis. And what Thomas says is caffeine has two effects on your body when you're in ketosis or trying to get in, into ketosis. Number one, it's really, really good for turning on lipolysis. And lipolysis is the process your body goes through in order to burn fat. So it makes the body capable of burning your stored fat. So that's good. Caffeine does that to your body. But the other thing it also does is it dumps glycogen and glycogen are the carbohydrates that we store in our muscles. It dumps glycogen from your muscles into your bloodstream and that happens instantly. Well at 11am when I tested my ketones I was drinking coffee straight away at that point. So it happens instantly, this dumping of glycogen into your bloodstream happens the minute you drink coffee but as quickly as it comes on it also goes away. So it is an instant thing and it does not last very long. So while that's a downside of drinking coffee, the upside is this lipolysis process, this effect it has on lipolysis and fat burning actually lasts, it could be longer than four hours, but at least up to four hours. So up to four hours after drinking coffee, it helps your body burn fat. But immediately as you're drinking it, it has a negative effect on your ketones. So this, it just fascinates me, the science behind that. So whether to drink more coffee, whether to drink less coffee, I really don't know. Because if it's helping with fat burning, well, that's a good thing. But if it's dumping my ketones, that's not a good thing, is it? So what I've decided to do is to drink my coffee as, it, as I have it now, pure coffee, in the morning. And then my body can carry on that fat burning process all day. And then in the afternoon, if I want coffee, I'm going caffeine free. I might even do a comparison of two days, not next week, but at some point, of eating exactly the same food and testing throughout the day my ketone levels when I'm drinking coffee and when I'm not drinking coffee. So do one day um, caffeine free and the other day on coffee and see what happens. That would be a really interesting experiment, but it's just fascinated me this week. So um, I'll put my way in, in here now. So I'm two pounds up, I think, which I'm really happy with because I'm drinking this Soleil water all the time. My, my salt in my body has drastically increased and I can tell you the way that I feel is fabulous. That has made a, a, a tremendous difference to me. So I think anybody who's doing keto, what I would recommend rather than just me saying, put salt on everything, salt, you need to track it, you need to actually measure that you're having the right amount of salt. So make this, it tastes vile. You can't just down a tail, it tastes like drinking sea water because it is literally water with lots and lots of salt in it and that's what it tastes like, sea water. So four tablespoons of that a day, I couldn't neck it, I need to do that. I need to put it in a big litre of water and I need to put some flavour in it and I just put little flab drops in, uh, lemon flab drops and I can't really taste it then. It's quite pleasant, pleasant that I don't mind drinking that. Um, so my advice would be measure measure your salt and make sure that you're getting the right amount. I think it's over 5,400 some that milligrams of salt you need every day, which is not 5,400 of weighed out salt because that's not pure sodium in that. You know, there may be other elements in it as well. So you do need to do something like doing the Soleil water and then you know exactly, four times that I know I'm getting the right amount of salt now. And that's made a massive difference. That I, can, I can tell you I'm back in ketosis um, was it last night? I put it in here, but my last night I was ketones were 0.6. So I'm now in ketosis. And I can tell you this morning, I know I'm in ketosis. I feel fabulous. I feel strong. I feel my mood is really changed as well, actually. Really, really positive. Um, I'm thinking, what shall I do next? I'll, I'll, I'm doing my video, then I'll go and do some housework, and then I'll come back and I'll do something else. I'm really positive. I'm really upbeat. But the cravings have gone, and I put that down to that salt water, the cravings have completely gone. Um, so I'm really grateful for that, because that's been the most difficult thing that I've had to deal with so far this year, January, February, and up to me, really getting back on plan two weeks ago. The cravings have been a killer, and that salt water has really, really helped with that. So my advice would be, if you're doing keto, starting keto, make sure you get your salts. If you're already on the, your journey, and you decide to implement this, be prepared for a weight gain. Um, but I'm hoping next week now that will sort itself out that I should have a good loss next week because I, I've, I've, my body's adjusted and as I say on was it Tuesday morning I was 12 stone 2 I'd had a 7 pound weight gain 
or was it Monday morning? A seven pound weight gain anyway, uh, after the first two days of taking that. And then as the week's gone on, it's correcting itself slowly. So it's come back down to just a two pound weight gain. So since Monday morning, actually it was, since Monday morning, I've lost five pounds of the water weight gain. So I'm just hoping now, because I'm in ketosis, I know I'm burning body fat, I'm tracking everything that I put in my mouth, that next week I'm gonna see a really good number on the scales, fingers crossed. So have a good week. If you're dieting, good luck this week and I shall check in with you next week. Bye-bye.